Meghan Markle slayed in chic tuxedo jumpsuit this weekend. I've found an amazing high street lookalike. Meghan stunned in the sleeveless style from Club Monaco. From chic waistcoats to cool trouser suits and sleek tux dresses, Meghan Markle loves a tailored look. On Saturday, she attended one of Oprah Winfrey's book club events in California, making another case for stylish suiting in a sleeveless Club Monaco jumpsuit. Hello viewers, please remember to subscribe and click on the notifications bell icon, so you will be notified whenever we upload new cookies about the British royal family. A photo of Meghan, 42, taking to the stage was shared on speaker and psychic medium Laura Lynn Jackson's Instagram stories. She captioned the post, most light-filled evening of speakers. Also speaking at the event was actor Marco Leone and renowned psychological astrologer Dr. Jennifer Freed. Prince Harry didn't appear to join his wife on the night, although his autobiography Spare was prominently on display. Meghan's elegant jumpsuit was cut with a collared halter neck falling to wide leg trousers, a signature silhouette for the suit's star, and it instantly reminded me of a jumpsuit that's just dropped at and other stories. While the, now sold out, Club Monaco style set the Duchess back around £315 or $348 if you're in the States, this high street piece is more affordable at £125 $179 or it's currently on ASOS for pound 115 slash dollar 165. Fully lined, it has an almost identical sleeveless, button-down waistcoat-inspired top, with wide leg trousers and a buckle waist belt. It's perfect new season office attire and so versatile as it could be worn with everything from sleek trainers to heeled ankle boots or stiletto court shoes. Club Monaco called theirs the ultimate one and done, and that's exactly why I love a jumpsuit, they take minimal effort to style and always look chic. For the colder months you could add a sophisticated wool blend coat, or dress it more casually with an oversized leather jacket. Megan accessorized with minimalist gold jewelry, including her Cartier Love Bangle, a Logan Hollowell diamond tennis necklace, and a Cartier Tank Frances watch that once belonged to Princess Diana. She completed the look with a pair of Jimmy Chuetana sandals. If you love Meghan's sleeveless jumpsuit but have a slightly lower budget, I've also found this affordable option from Mango. It's so stylish, I could see the Duchess wearing it. Cut with a straight leg and wide straps with a crossover design, it comes in a very inclusive size range of XXS to 4XL and retails for just pound 59.99 slash dollar 99.99. I'd style it with barely their heels, delicate gold jewelry, and a leather jacket. An insider informed the magazine that Markle's team is thinking about backups. They've been put into a bit of a last-minute spin but they're not too worried because they are aware that Kim, Kardashian, also changed her brand name after launch and it still did amazingly well, the source said. Although changing the name at this point in time would be a costly measure due to all the branding Markle has done so far, the insider stated that it wouldn't be the end of the world. The name that Markle chose for her brand is a sweet homage to Santa Barbara, California, where she lives with her spouse, Prince Harry, and their two kids. The term orchard does not diminish the primarily geographical descriptiveness of the applied for mark, according to a used to statement on Saturday. The 43-year-old former actress now has three months to respond to the used to's letter, or else her application could get rejected. In addition, she needs to spend an extra $700 in order to proceed with the trademark for registration. Markle is yet to disclose the debut date of her new business venture, which she revealed in March. While the products of her lifestyle brand are not up for sale, the Duchess gifted strawberry jam jars to a select number of celeb friends in April, hinting at a great start of the company's launch. Meghan Markle's pre-fame Toronto abode is off the market less than a week after its listing popped up in the lookouts for a new buyer. The three-bedroom place was home sweet home to the suits alum during her old TV days and pre-marriage Prince Harry dating era. 
Markle's rented two-story viola-colored home on Yarmouth Road was listed for $1.39 million towards the end of August, according to real estate platform Zolo. It raked in $1.89 million five days later and was marked sold. According to Mansion Global, Freeman Real Estate's Daniel Freeman handled the current listing for the house with the Tiffany Blue front door. Although originally from Los Angeles, the Duchess of Sussex lived in the Toronto property for about two years until late 2017. Following her courtship with Prince Harry, she moved to Kensington Palace as the Duke's fiance. The Seaton Village home also stole a page-turning moment in Harry's 2023 memoir Spare, as he wrote, Meg was excited to show me her life, her dogs, her little house, which she adored. Meghan's then-boyfriend frequently visited the Toronto home during her Suits filming commitments in the city. Omid Scobie and Carolyn Duron's book Finding Freedom lifted the lid on Harry and Meghan's relationship. Her extracts released by The Times, the pair was in Toronto when the press started circling in on their dating phase. One night late in October in Toronto, Harry was happy, and so was Meghan. Until they received a call from one of Harry's aides at Kensington Palace. It wasn't good news. A tabloid was going to run with the story of their relationship. Their main worry was that her place would be besieged by photographers within 24 hours. They had little time to think, because there were only a couple of paparazzi in Toronto but it wouldn't be long before photographers flew in from New York and LA, all hoping to get that first picture of the happy couple, says the biography. Nestled in a quiet West End residential neighborhood block, Markle's former house has a private yard with a deck and two-car garage. The two-bedroom house, owned by Canadian fashion stylist Elizabeth Cabral, also features a finished basement and an eat-in chef's kitchen on the ground floor. In a major blow, Meghan Markle's appeal to trademark her new homewares empire has been rejected after the Duchess sought legal protection to sell products solely under the name American Riviera Orchard. The United States Patent and Trademark Office, USTO, dismissed her application, pointing out that the wording of her trademark is a common nickname for Santa Barbara in California. Meghan has received three months to react on the USTO's non-final officer action. The failure of doing so will reject her application. This setback coincides with delays in the launch of her brand's product. Despite a glamorous Instagram debut five months ago, the brand has not yet offered any products for sale to the general public. In a 48-page document, the USTO listed a number of grounds for denying Meghan's trademark plea. These include the necessity to remove any descriptive language pertaining to Riviera, conform with multiple class application guidelines, and provide clear descriptions of the commodities. The descriptions for products like cooking utensils, pans, and cocktail napkins were deemed excessively imprecise by officials. Meghan has been instructed to pay an extra $700, 532 pounds, in order to proceed after she failed to pay the right amount. Moreover, her team, led by renowned U.S. attorney Marjorie Witter Norman, did not fill the form correctly and the application was not even signed.